right where you were standing, huh? Yeah. What year were you born by? 78. It was, you were one year old when this event occurred. <laughs> you were negative. Negative 11. <laughs> No, when that? When that? Maybe. <laughs> and then what eventually led to Malaga? Well, we actually went back to Athens. I'm not sure why. What did you do? Up well, there we took that, that summer job. Oh, right. We went to Camp Timberlake. Yeah. He says, "Oh, we're gonna make all this money. We, right. You know, we're gonna work at this camp, but at the end of it." We're going to have a lot of money. Yeah. So, you know, we go. He's the cook, and I'm in charge of desserts and breads. And there's 800 kids there. And you know what? They have to eat three times a day. Yeah. Was... <laughs> Every day. Yeah. So. Eight weeks. Eight weeks of, I think we had a Wednesday afternoon off. Sandwich day. Sandwich day. Yeah. And during this period of time, the people next to us who worked for him, young kids who smoked uh, burnt their house the cabin burned down right next to us and ultimately ours burned partially down so <laughs> we lost a lot of our stuff and uh, that was camp timberlake and at the end of it i think we came out with twenty three hundred dollars <laughs> whoa yeah seemed like a lot of money at the time. <laughs> not after that <laughs> after that trip is when we came down to uh, St. Augustine and uh, hit the nuns. How many nuns did you say we hit? It was a bunch of them, man. I've never seen so many nuns pile out of a station wagon in my life. We're looking for this couple, you know, that, were, that, that we were friends with from Ohio that, that were living here at the time. And we went to a stop sign on the corner of uh, South and Marine. The nuns were coming this way. We were coming that way. And we collided, you know? <laughs> Infinitesimal amount of nuns pouring out of the station wagon. Did the uh, police come? There was probably two cops in town that, in that era. <laughs> no one got hurt. I don't know what happened to them, to be honest with you. To this day, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they got a ride and ended up somewhere. They probably were on their way to the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's directing traffic. I love it. He's going to know somebody. Hey, how you doing? What are you doing? I told you. Good, thanks. These are my sons. <laughs> Who's that? I have no idea. <laughs> I wonder what percentage of the cars that leave here you would know. One, I bet it would be like four out of 10. Yeah. yeah. I would think so, he probably knows them. We're already like two out of. What's going on here? So anyway, we love that. <laughs> yeah, going to the sky a long time there. <laughs> I mean, how many people do you know? We were two, two for, we were two for four. Look, they're looking. Yep. Yeah. Three. Don't hang around the street corner. <laughs> what are you doing? You, oh yeah. Oh, she's over here. Where is she? At the Bayview? Okay. Tell her hi. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped. I started. You want one? <laughs> you know, I was doing so many drugs and drinking, and it was just too wild for me. I remember I was doing acid, right. and we were stuck out in that house on Route 50. Which one? The house with the goats. You know, I just, I, I just wanted to, a change, you know? And we didn't even know where we were going. We had no clue. You know, we had a bunch of restaurant junk. I stopped at our old apartment to see if there had been any mail or anything, and he told us about Mary's Little Kitchen. The Malaga Street. And uh, so I called Ned up and said, you know, Barry says there's a really neat place to, to buy. How much did you pay for that? $5,000, I think. It was a breakfast place. We opened that. At five, six, six. Six, probably six in the morning. Went till what time? Two thirty or three. Two thirty. That's as long as I can stay sober. Malaga Street was my favorite restaurant I've ever been to, because it was Ned food, breakfast, lunch, but big portions of great food for a cheap price. Right. <laughs> you couldn't beat it. I mean, he's got a great restaurant now. It's uh, it's similar, but back in the day. I, I'd never seen anything like 
Malaga Street before. This town was really small yeah. back in when I moved here in the early 80s. You know, and the Malaga Street Depot was just open, and people used to go in there all the time. I, I went there once or twice. But. It's probably 79 or 80. We go, we go downtown St. George Street quarter beer night, and then the next morning we wake up because there's always noise. So we walk over to Malaga Street and we'd have breakfast. We decided after being open for a year to have a, a big party. So we hired the Doug Carn Trio yeah. for breakfast. You yeah. know, so everybody's there. We were serving um, mimosas or something. Yeah. I mean, this is 8.30 in the morning. So the bus pulls up and these passengers oh, yeah. all get out. And this woman opens the door, this older woman. Had she ended up being a friend of my mother's. Really? Yeah. She had a suitcase in her hand. Doug Carn is playing Oh Danny Boy in the, in the corner. So this woman opens the door, walks in, just kind of looks around. We're all drinking. And yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a band at 8.30 in the morning. And they're playing Oh Danny Boy. She starts belting out Oh Good Danny singing. Boy. And starts yeah. singing. Yeah. <laughs> not planned. No, not planned not at all. Not planned. Didn't even no, know we don't know who this person was. That's she, the kind uh, of place that yeah. the depot was. Yeah. And it just so happened that some famous uh, Irish Republican Army guy, Bobby Sands, I think that was the day he died or he died the day before. And she was like a real kind of Bolshevik. I was telling on you, Ned, about when we go to Malaga Street and you were like screaming and yelling. And huh. like, Not me. We were all hungover. And, <laughs> and my girlfriend and I, we lived right next to 144 so King. We lived at 138. Really? Yeah. Yeah, in the back. We'd walk around the corner of Malaga and have breakfast. This is the guy that, uh, him and his wife and daughter Jane, mm -hmm. they were going to kayak to Mexico when I first got here. I said, shit, what do I know? These people say they're kayaking to Mexico. So me and Doris drove him out to Federal Point. About two hours later, he calls me, he goes, this sucks. <laughs> this sucks. So they lived with us for three months until I beat up my next door neighbor. And he goes, man, the vibes here, the vibes here are too bad. Was Yuri. The interesting thing about that restaurant was that his first idea for it was more of a meat and potatoes and blue plate specials. And, yeah. And uh, it ended up being more of a... It evolved yeah. differently. It was the best breakfast in the whole world. I really paid five grand for nothing except a grandfathered in location. You know, because there was nothing really there. I, I remember going down to the Tides, your friend's uncle. So I went down to the bar, met him. He stole me a stove. And a big crack in the griddle. <laughs> it didn't work, so I, I was like going, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill that guy. I'm running around town with my stupid little gun. What did his fault? I ended up using the stove. You got it fixed? Huh? You fixed it? It caught fire every Sunday. Because <laughs> of that crack in the griddle. You just used it anyway? Yeah. The depot, you had that for almost, almost three years. <laughs> I bet one time I ran out of gas and uh, the gas went off. He didn't deliver gas. I'll leave it to $18 to make sure I paid my bills, I always paid my bills. <laughs> and every, the place is packed. That place was packed a lot, especially on a Sunday. I said, All right, that's it, I quit. I screamed to everybody, eating there, eating there. I'm like, This sucks. I ain't doing this shit no more. That's it, man. I'm done. They all like look up for a split second, go back to whatever they were doing, and then Gary shows. You know, I call Gary and he shows up, and fills me up with gas. <laughs> as soon as I called him, he showed up with the gas. You know, it was like a ten-minute ordeal. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. And it, then we sold it. Buy it. Yeah, and then it kept getting sold to different people. The cinnamon, rolls. the cinnamon rolls. The cinnamon rolls, <laughs> the <laughs> muffins. <laughs> and she used to make a, the infamous a zucchini roll. bread and an orange tea cake. And the pancakes were good. The pancakes were good. Orange whole wheat pancakes. Yeah, even like right before my mother died, she wanted the recipe to the, to the, <laughs> to the cinnamon rolls. I go, Ma, you're like, like in bed. You can't even walk. You know? She badgered she goes, me for that recipe. She goes, go ask Joy for that recipe. <laughs> it was really good food there. It right? was. It was, it was really good. I mean, yeah, it sounds like it was amazing. And everybody sat with everybody. Well, that's how we met most of the. And if you come in to eat, I just people. I just made stuff. 
and it went out. I didn't care if like three people at your table didn't get their breakfast yet. It just kept going, just like. It was a lot of eggs. A lot of eggs. But that's where we met most of the. Friend, our friends our in friends town that, friends, that are still our friends. Our long-term friends was yeah. there. Yeah. And yeah. Or as he would say, two eggs over easy. Or, yeah. I mean, he would remember exactly what these people would, would order. Ned actually does remember that. Uh, well, 35. Oh, yeah. 35 yeah. years ago. Wow. Today, yeah. we were in Malibu. Malibu was in Malibu. Yeah. We had breakfast. Yeah. Malibu's Chief Tebow. My dad's like, we have time for breakfast. <laughs> I can see Randy saying that, too. Oh, yeah. Randy had the famous Randy omelet. Yeah. What was the Randy omelet? Cream cheese, chicken, Bayesian mel, green onions. Oh, <laughs> cheddar cheese. That was a really interesting time when all those people came together from all over. You had them coming from Tennessee and, and like the commune or the farm in Tennessee moved down here. And it was just the right bunch of people at that point when they did that restaurant, yeah. which was really kind of, that's what made that work. I mean, that was really kind of cool how that happened. And then when Ned opened Gypsy, that was the same thing, you know, with Joy and all the people coming back together. and and joining in and making that work and, and the different stuff and and just the idea, the, the style of cooking it was gonna be, something yeah. different. He, you think about it, Ned was way ahead of his time.